Hello everyone, uh, 0.29 has been out for a couple days and after seeing some of the responses I kind of wanted to put my own thoughts on things out there. It hasn't been the most well received update, well, not to most of the player base, if you look at the YouTube comment sections then you'd never even expect it, but regardless there's been a subset of disappointment regarding this update. Uh, this isn't going to have much of my usual editing, uh, I want to spend as much time as I can on Best Configs Part 2 for now, so this is mainly just going to be some commentary. Uh, Sourdust video in the update sums up a lot of what I've heard in regards to the complaints. Uh, I'll link it in the description, and I plead for anyone disagreeing to view it with an open mind and without a knee-jerk reaction. I thought he was mostly clear and precise with his explanations, and his viewpoint is very valid and very easy to understand. So. Please be fair when interacting with the video. Comments there tend to agree as well, and it's clear that a chunk of people resonate with some of the disappointment shared with this update. Uh, this video wasn't necessarily a response to his video, but rather those who have similar thoughts in general, which I've seen across multiple platforms. Uh, I will be referring to some of his points though, because he sums it up well and captures what many think. Alright, I'll, I'll get on with it. Now, the update is the smallest in a long time, with the main features being a, a new car, which is a good start, uh, 7 new configs outside of it, and 25 new missions. Not much more aside from that. I'm not going to deny it is small, but I don't think it's as bad of a situation as some may say. Uh, 0 0.28 was released exactly 3 months prior to 0 0.29, which I think is the second shortest wait in between updates in the last couple years and perhaps the shortest in that time frame if we're not including updates that were two years in the making. In those three months, an entirely new car, the gambler configs, as well as hotfixes for 0.28 were all in development. Uh, in fact, hotfixes went on for over a month after the initial release. If we counted the time where the next update was the main focus, it'd probably be down to like less than two months to finish a new car built up from scratch, as well as numerous new and unorthodox parts for multiple different cars. And I haven't even gotten to the new content itself yet. Uh, the Lansdale is maybe the most versatile, varied, and content-filled new car I've added to the game in years. It's got 12, 13 liveries, 6 or 7 different front fascias, and a whole lot of other stuff to customize which gives the car 34 configs, including low poly traffic models which also had to be worked on. It's a lot. The Gambler cars, while there may have been only, I think, 8 of them, uh, also featured many new parts and props also modeled from scratch. They've got a lot of detail and are a lot more sophisticated to make than a simple front bumper facelift or something. Combined, that's about 40 something configs included in one update, which doesn't seem too much until you consider what new parts are added. So while it may not seem like a lot, the devs still had quite a bit to work on in a relatively short time span. As a result, criticism may be directed towards the decision to even agree on this partnership in the first place, but I'm not sure a game company is just going to turn down such an opportunity. This is BeamNG's first partnership with an actual racing event, and it helps the game as well as the event reach totally new audiences. Thousands upon thousands of gearheads and enthusiasts attend it yearly, and the freedom and customization with a car that comes with it fizzled the game very well because you can do all that in the comfort of your own home. I'd be surprised if participants weren't intrigued by the partnership. A good chunk of VMNG players also had no idea that the Gamper 500 even existed, so this new exposure is bound to bring new entrants there. I just can't fault them for accepting an opportunity like this. Another thing I see is the supposed off-road bias that the previous couple updates have displayed, and I'll admit that two updates in the last year with a focus on off-roading seems like a little much at first, but again, I don't think it's that severe. Uh, 0 0.27 was BMG's first and so far only true off-road centric update, which isn't to say that there was no off-roading content prior, but nothing's really done it like 0 0.27 did. I don't think one update like this is going to be the end of the world, especially since BMG has a rather unorthodox community. The part of it that likes this stuff is more sizable than something like Gran Turismo with how universal BMG can be and how it attracts a wider variety of car guys. And that's ignoring how the Stembeko has multiple uses off the dirt and how the Doom Kicker comes with the grippy stadium truck config that allows for players to recreate stadium super trucks. 
0.29 in comparison is still very distinct, considering that the previous update had a greater focus on purebred race machines, while this one is more centered towards amateur customization. Remember the word customization, because there's nothing stopping players from turning the gambler cars into race machines either. Ever seen the 24 Hours of Lemons? People there also customize their cars like crazy while on a budget, and it can make for some hilarious results in the same way that the Gambler 500 does, except on the road. Why not do stuff like that with the new parts that 0.29 offers? And that's ignoring the addition of one of the most heavily requested vehicle types for years with the variety and customization explained previously. And then, do keep in mind that partnerships are a lot more difficult to plan in advance than regular updates. 0.27 had been in production for two years, obviously the devs knew what they were doing with that for a while. On the other hand, an update revolving around a partnership is a lot more fickle, and I wouldn't assume that the devs had had this in their plans all along, especially less than a year after 0.27. Uh, heck, this is just hypothesizing at this point, but with the attention that Beam and G got coming from King of the Hammers and vice versa following 0.27, it's possible that Gambler jumped on the opportunity to do the same. Although, again, that's just feeble guesswork. I don't know if Beam and G approached Gambler or if Gambler approached Beam and G. Take that with a massive grain of salt. In total, though, I just personally wouldn't jump on board with the idea of a big off roading bias from the devs. Even then, a sample size of two updates, which as already explained have more than what meets the eye, is still pretty small to think that it'll be the primary focus of the devs from here on out. And that's missing how there's an on-road focused update which added multiple performance racers smack dab in the middle of it. Lastly, I want to address the complaints that the devs aren't focusing on advancing and polishing the base game enough. I understand this sentiment considering that new content has outnumbered new improvements recently, but considering other variables, I can see why, at least for the moment. BMG's dev team is made up of over 70 people at this point, it's not a small group of computer engineering students. Different people work on different things, from content to the game engine. Work on new cars and new missions doesn't seriously affect game engine improvements when their progress is separate and done by separate people so I wouldn't say that time and effort gets wasted on this sort of stuff. And even then, BeamNG is obviously a super sophisticated game, and it's only getting more sophisticated as time goes on and on. Standards have only increased, both for content and engine improvements, and while people can move on from poorly done new content, which also takes less time in general, it's a lot more difficult to move on from poorly done game improvements, which is why it's so crucial that they're done properly. Take tire thermals for example, which have been in active development for a good while now. Even without that and aerodynamics, BMG's driving models and physics are still highly praised, but improper implementation of a new mechanic can undo a lot of that. Which in the case of tire thermals is very easy to screw up. You need to compute stuff like exactly what conditions are needed to make the tires more or less grippy, and by exactly how much, all done on multiple tires at the exact same time, on every different surface, and it needs to be implemented in a way that isn't too computer intensive. You can point to the mod, but that's still got a ways to go, and it's got its own set of complaints. This stuff is long and tedious. And yet, while development is getting harder, the wait for updates has stayed rather stagnant. A lot of people are accustomed to the 3 or 4 month cycle of waiting for updates at this point. Any further and a lot of the community gets restless, as seen with stuff like the Chantilla updates half year wait. To many, frequent updates are one of the best perks of following this game, and they're not going to lose that. If we expect the same update cycle, we can't expect big engine improvements and modernization every update or even every other update anymore. Cause if we did, then it'd be a very slow game to follow. Alongside the complaints of not polishing the base game comes with complaints of the devs not focusing on remasters enough, but I don't find much of an issue with the rate at which they do them for the moment. And in my opinion, adding new cars have just as big of a role in improving the game as remastering old ones. When you look at BMNG's sandbox and the variety of things you can do with it, one of the massive appeals is doing whatever you want with a car that you like, or a car that you have a connection to, or maybe even a car that you hate. The greater variety only reaches greater audiences and adds tons of new possibilities to every single scenario, 
and nothing really achieves that content-wise than an entire new car. It's reflected in the community as well. The BMG forums and Discord are rife with discussion about what cars they want in the game the most, uh, what cars they don't want, what cars aren't represented, what are, etc, etc. Nothing really excites people more than an entirely new toy to play with that serves as a new interpretation of real-life car design. Now, remaster discussion is also prevalent, which is why it's valid to want that more. But do realize that since the initial Grand Marshal remaster back in mid-2019, which kickstarted all this madness, remasters have actually outnumbered new cars 12 to 10, and updates including them have outnumbered updates with new cars 10 to 7. As said earlier, new cars are still a super hyped subject for BMG, so there's a reason why the devs just aren't going to abandon that side of things. And yet still, there's actually been more attention given to existing cars than adding completely new ones. It's even more apparent in regards to maps, which have seen like 8 to 9 remasters compared to like 2 new ones in the last couple of years. Modernization of the game has been ongoing for a while, and in some cases, a lot more than the rate at which it's expanding. <sighs> that was a lot. Thanks for sticking around to the end for whoever listened to the whole thing. In summary, basically, I'm just not as unhappy about this update compared to some. It doesn't leave me any more cynical with the game's direction. Uh, certainly you are allowed to be disappointed with the update. I'm not saying feelings of concern and discontentment aren't valid and understandable, but this video is essentially why I and some others feel differently. In the end, I'm still excited to see what the devs have in mind next, and in the same way I've always been. This game and its updates still give me too much of praise for me to be a huge cynic about it in its future. If you disagree, that's okay, and you're open to ask questions about it in the comments. This was a lot to write, and it felt a lot more tedious than my usual videos, not gonna lie, so I may have missed a point or two. For now, I'll be enjoying the Lansdale and working on my next projects, so have a good one, ladies and gentlemen.